Hello everybody and welcome to NativeScript version 2.5. We are super excited to bring you up to speed on the latest and greatest from the NativeScript framework today. As a quick round of introductions, my name is Rob Lauer and I'll be joined by Jen Looper and TJ Van Tol. We are all part of the developer relations team here at Progress, focusing primarily on NativeScript and our mobile tools. Now you should always feel free to reach out to any of us via Twitter, email, Slack, whatever avenue you can find. We are here to help you be more successful with NativeScript. Now, before we begin, I would be remiss if I didn't give a special welcome to those of you who are brand new to NativeScript. We don't want to leave you behind, of course. So as a primer, there are a few quick things you need to know about the NativeScript framework. The first is that, yes, you can use NativeScript to build truly native cross-platform apps for iOS and Android. This means 100% code reuse across these platforms with native platform-specific UI. So this means truly native UI and true native performance. Now, before you ask, yes, we do plan on also supporting Windows UWP development, and that is something we are looking at more closely as 2017 progresses. And how you build these apps is also very important, of course. You create apps using the web skills you already know. So this means a simple XML syntax for your views, JavaScript to wire up your code, and CSS to style your apps. We also provide full support for TypeScript and Google's Angular 2 framework. And even though you are using your web skills, this does not mean you are coding against web views. NativeScript is not PhoneGap, it's not Cordova. It is JavaScript running natively with native UI directly on the devices. So after this webinar, I encourage you to learn all about building apps with NativeScript by diving into our comprehensive getting started tutorials. Uh, you can find those at nativescript.org. You'll learn the basic concepts of NativeScript and even build a cool little grocery list app while you're at it. Now we get a lot of questions about the popularity of NativeScript. You know, what is the adoption like in the mobile development community? Well, over the last few months, we've seen a complete explosion in the growth of NativeScript downloads from NPM. Now this here is just one metric, of course, but across the board, we're seeing increased usage and engagement with the NativeScript framework. And we really fully expect this growth pattern to continue well into 2017. And it's important to note that even though NativeScript is free and open source, it also has the backing of a tried and true company called Progress. So you get the benefit of a free framework combined with outstanding enterprise grade backing and support. All right, on to what we're covering today. So first up will be TJ Van Tol, and TJ is gonna be covering updates to LiveSync, using Flexbox layouts, and our improved debugging capabilities. Now after TJ will be Jen Looper, who is going to dive into the latest news regarding NativeScript plugins. Jen is also going to show off some improvements that our Windows users will definitely appreciate, and that is a new installer system. And finally, I'll be back at the end to talk all about NativeScript UI in terms of theming your app and extending your app with a variety of UI widgets. So with that, I'm going to hand it over right now to TJ. Hey there, this is TJ from the NativeScript team. I'm going to kick things off today by covering a few new NativeScript features including some CLI improvements we've made, as well as some new NativeScript debugging options that are now available. We'll take a look at these features while building a relatively simple Pokemon app that will show these features off in action. I've actually already gotten this app started to save us a little bit of time. I'm here in my terminal. I've also got this app up and loaded in Visual Studio code as well. You can see this is just sort of a scaffolded basic app right now. Now, if you've been doing NativeScript development for a long time, you might know that typically when you get started developing an app, you'd use the TNS create command to actually build that application out. Then you'd typically do something like TNS platform add to add the platforms that you want this app to run on. Uh, <laughs> then you'd use TNS run. You'd probably pass that saying some flags. All in all, there's quite a few commands or there were quite a few commands to get up and running. For NativeScript 2.5, we've simplified this workflow considerably. Now, after you've created that app with TNS Create, which again, I said I've already done with this little Pokemon app here, you can just use the TNS run command to get your app up and running. What this will do is it'll actually build, uh, it'll add the iOS platform. The command will also build my application, which is what is happening right now. It will launch it on the iOS simulator. The CLI will detect that I do not have an iPhone USB connected, so it'll launch the it'll default to this simulator automatically. And what's really new for 2.5 is that it will also watch for changes as well. 
So again, app not doing much right now, but I do have some data for Pokemon preloaded here. And so I'm gonna paste in a very basic repeater here that'll just spit the Pokemon out to the screen. See, NativeScript handles this list of 700-ish images quite nicely, actually. Now, you can see how easily I was able to get up and running. TNS create, TNS run, and that's it. Um, in this app, though, it's kind of basic at the moment. Uh, you can see I'm not making the best use of my space here. I just have a single column layout here. And I'd rather just fit as many of these images in on one screen as I can. Now, the reason these are sort of aligned top to bottom here is the NativeScript repeater component basically has a built-in layout that it uses to actually render all of these templates, or in this case, all of these images. By default, that component is a stack layout, which is why these things are stacked top to bottom here. But you do have the ability to configure the layout, and that's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna paste in an update to use this items layout property, and I'm going to say, okay, instead of using that stack layout to stack these top to bottom, let's use a Flexbox layout instead. Now, you can see this didn't do exactly what I wanted here. Uh, and the reason for that is Flexbox by default does two things. It aligns things uh, on a horizontal line, so left to right here, which is why you see it actually kind of amazes me that <laughs> NativeScript is able to render anything at all here because there's about 700 some images but it also does not wrap by default. So it just shoves all of those images in there on one line. But luckily Flexbox is very configurable and very well suited to this sort of use case. What I'm gonna do is I have this CSS class name of container. So I'm gonna go into my app.css file and I'm gonna specify the flex wrap property, which you can set to either wrap or no wrap. In this case, I want these things to wrap. And all of a sudden I've got an app that looks pretty decent. I've got uh, basically as many images that will fit in a row. And if I switch like say portrait to landscape, or maybe I switch over to an iPad, these images will render in these environments as well, as well as Android as well, which we'll see here in a minute. Flexbox works really well for these types of situations, <laughs> for these types of situations, also because it's very configurable. So in addition to flex wrap, there's a number of these other properties you can use. I'm going to pick a, Quick one to justify uh, space around, which you can see just sort of organizes these images better on a single line. Whoops, there we go back here. Now, if you don't come from a web development background, Flexbox can be a, a little tough to get used to um, when you're getting started. So I'll recommend two resources that you might want to check out. The first is the CSS Tricks Guide to Flexbox. This is basically the Flexbox Bible. <laughs> if you Google for Flexbox, this is almost certainly the first thing that's gonna show up. You can learn about all the different properties that you can use both for parent components in NativeScript. This is gonna be the Flexbox layout um, and the children. So these are things that I could attach to the image components in our Pokemon example here. This is good reference bookmark material. Another resource is Flexbox Froggy. This is a simple little game where your task is to use CSS to get the frog onto the lily pad, but it's set up in a way that teaches you all the various properties. You see, we just use justify content. It'll teach you all of the properties that you need to know. But with that, that's uh, sufficient enough of a user interface for our simple little example here. The next feature I wanna add is I wanna turn this into a really simple master detail list. So I want the ability to tap on one of these Pokemon and just see a little detail screen that shows me the Pokemon's name. Just use this as a little app where I can teach myself the name of all of these different creatures. So to do that, I'm going to head back to my XML here. And for each image, image I'm going to add a new tap attribute and say, when you tap on these things, go ahead and navigate. And navigate is a function I have to define. So I've got a little snippet I can use for that. But you can see my snippet's missing something. Now, uh, if you're like me, um, so for some of these little things, uh, committing the exact syntax that NativeScript or really any language uses can be a little bit challenging. I know that the data for each of these individual creatures is passed somewhere in these arguments. Uh, I don't remember exactly where though. And so typically I'd do something like I'd log or maybe dump these arguments and sift through what was there and sort of try to find the data that I'm looking for. But there's now some options to make this a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back to my command line. I'm gonna kill this iOS runner here 
And I'm going to start this app up on Android instead. And this time use the TNS debug command. Now what this is going to do, it's going to, first of all, do the same thing that TNS run does for Android. It's going to actually start up in Android emulator. You can see I've got an Android AVD starting right here. It's going to build the Android application and deploy it to that AVD, something that the command line's done for a long time now. But because I use the TNS debug command for Android, there's going to be one last step where the NativeScript CLI will configure this app to be debuggable from the Chrome developer tools, the same Chrome developer tools that you would use to debug a web application. So once this finishes, it just built the APK. It's launching us on this emulator. We're going to get a little URL here, which I could take and paste and get my Chrome browser over here into Chrome to launch an instance of the Chrome developer tools to debug this completely native Android application. So if I dive in here, I can find a list of files associated with my app. Here's that main page.js file we were just looking at here. And here's the line of code where I wanted to debug. So if I go back to Android here, I click on Charmeleon there. You can see uh, something that I still think is pretty cool, being able to debug this completely native Android app in the Chrome browser here. And I can even go in here and start to drill into this object. It's rib.object. I think it's, no, it's, it's not navigation. It's, uh, I think it's, is it binding context? Yeah, there we go. Args.object.binding context, and I can confirm I've got the data I, I need. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to throw it on my clipboard. I'm done with this, so I'm going to go ahead and step out of this, uh, paste this in. And once I save this, you'll note the one other cool thing is that the debug command, it's basically just a super set of the run command. So even though I'm debugging and then I could go straight back into those developer tools, I could have left them open if I would have liked, the native script CLI still watches my app and I have the ability to make these changes and debug at the same time. Now you'll note that this didn't have any change. I can now navigate between these Pokemon, but there's no, there's nothing visibly happening here. Uh, and that's because on my actual detail page I have set up, I have a very basic data binding and just looking to get the Pokemon's name and its actual uh, image, which is in this sprite property here. But what I have not done is in my JavaScript code, uh, I set this binding context and I know that the data, essentially the data that's being passed here, so my context from this previous page, passes this object from the main page over to the details page. But I once again cannot for the life of me ever remember what the syntax is. What's the name of that property that I can use to receive those values? Now I could, again, I could open up my Chrome developer tools and I could do the exact same thing I just did before, but I want to show one new option that you have available and that's debugging directly within Visual Studio Code. Now our Visual Studio Code extension, I'll get some of these things out of the way here, is not something new with NativeScript 2.5. You've always been able to go into this little extensions tab here, search for NativeScript and install this to add a bunch of tooling to Visual Studio Code specifically for NativeScript development. Our debugger is also not new. You've always been able to go in here to set up a little launch configuration and debug your native script applications. What is new is some new options that we have that sort of mesh with the improvements that we've made with the native script CLI. So you can see the options now for launching this are now a lot, now a lot simpler. You can either launch on iOS, you can launch on Android or attached to an existing iOS or Android application. The other improvement, and this is probably my favorite thing in this entire release, is that the Visual Studio Code developer now allows you to watch and debug at the same time directly within Visual Studio Code. So just like working in the Chrome developer tools, I can set a breakpoint, but this time I'm doing so directly within my editor. I can choose a Pokemon. Let me pick, uh, let's go with Pidgey right here. You can see that I, again, stop in this value. So I can do the same sort of things where I watch the variables that are available. I can set up watch variables. I can look at the call stack. I can, again, do the thing where I type these out. I can sort of drill into objects to see the values that I'm looking for. In this case, I happen to know that the value is on the page, and it's called navigation context. So I can save this and notice how the debugger keeps on running but that the native script CLI through this debug console goes ahead and pushes out those changes. And so after this loads here, I can click on, let's say Ivysaur here. I still hit my breakpoint. 
but my change is now in place to actually set those values that were passed from the master page to the detail page on the binding context of this page. And so make, these values are now available for data binding. Overall, again, the thing to be excited about NativeScript 2.5 is it really streamlines the process for NativeScript development. The TNS run command is now a heck of a lot smarter, and it's really everything you need to develop and use your NativeScript applications. TNS run watches by default, and you can also use the built-in Chrome developer tools or the Visual Studio Code extension to add some extra powerful debugging capabilities to your NativeScript applications. And we're just getting started looking at this new NativeScript release. To look at some other new things with NativeScript, I'm going to pass things over to my colleague, Jen Looper. Jen? Thanks, TJ. Hi, everybody. My name is Jen. I'm one of the developer advocates here on the developer relations team at Progress. I'm happy to advocate for NativeScript. Maybe you've um, heard some of my talks uh, or seen some of my presentations. You, if, if you have, you know I'm very passionate about NativeScript. I uh, have a great time developing with it and showing it off to people. So what I want to just do today is talk about two things. The first one is the plugins hub that we're on launching this coming week and also the windows installer which we're i'm going to just give you a little sneak peek so that you can see how it works so just to give you a little idea of the history of our plugin efforts here on the native script side uh, one of the first sites that was launched to host plugins was nativescript.rocks and it was built by, by nathaniel anderson who is one of our fabulous developer experts um, we have many NativeScript developer experts, and they are all over the world advocating for NativeScript. They are community members, they're not internal resources, but these are just people who love NativeScript and who build amazing NativeScript tools. One of those was NativeScript Rocks, uh, built by Nathaniel Anderson. And it's basically just pulling out of NPM all of the uh, community generated plugins and also some of the internal plugins. As long as they're on NPM, they're on NativeScript Rocks. We've also had an internal site uh, built for hosting our verified and internal plugins. If you've done any Cordova development with um, Telerik products, you've, you're probably well aware of plugins.telerik.com, one of my favorite sites. And there's a Cordova section for Cordova plugins, and then there's uh, also a NativeScript section for NativeScript plugins. And we have awesome plugins that we have um, built ourselves or that we have uh, verified and have worked with external people to have built for us, um, including plugins by the fabulous Eddie Verbruggen, Mr. Plugin, uh, who has done plugins like the Firebase plugin, which I use all day long, basically every day. But what I want to announce today and to, to launch today, I'm so excited to do this, is a community effort to consolidate these two marketplaces and have this beautiful plugins hub that will be linked up to the nativescript.org site where you can just find all the plugins that you need to quickly and efficiently um, get going with the plugins that you need to finish your project. So um, in that spirit, we talked to Nathaniel Anderson, Nathan Walker, and George Edwards. Uh, this is a multi multinational team. We've got um, Nathaniel in Mexico, Nathan over on the West Coast, and George in England, uh, working with the developer relations team and uh, in some wonderful internal designers to build for you the plugins.nativescript.org hub. So if you visit today, plugins.nativescript.org, you'll find a beautiful card interface, and you can just scroll along and find the plugins that you're looking for. And while I'm here, I just want to point to the star rating that is automatically generated for each plugin, and it basically rates the health of the plugin. For example, if a, if a plugin covers both platforms, or if there are any problems, um, there might be added or deducted certain stars. So if you find a plugin on this hub that tickles your fancy, just click on the card, and you'll be given information about the plugin, its features, how to install it, some code samples, and other information of interest. Here's an interesting plugin by Marcel Kluber. We can take a look at what this chat view can do for us. Of course, the site is responsive and looks very nice on your mobile devices. And if card interfaces aren't your thing, you can use the icon on the left to view all of these plugins in a list format. We also have a very nice search interface. Here you can just start typing and you'll be prompted with um, the name of a plugin that might be of interest to you. I'm going to take a look at something like a pedometer, for example. 
And we've added links at the top so that you can go back to your view all of plugins view, or you can get um, instructions on how to create your own plugin um, by visiting the docs. And we also, of course, have a link to learn more about NativeScript. So I'm so happy to announce this launch of our new plugins hub. I hope you enjoy it. Give us feedback on how you're using it, what you think we should improve, and uh, we will be looking to enhance it as we go forward. So moving on, I just want to give you a sneak peek of our new Windows installer. I am so excited about this. So I'm a Mac user. I almost never use a PC, but I do have an old one that doesn't have anything installed on it. So I thought, let me just give this a shot and see if I can actually get uh, native script installed on my Windows machine by using an installer and turns out you can do it it's not so hard with our new installer and um, I'm just going to show you a series of screenshots of how it went um, because I had to do several pre-installs I had to get Android SDK and my JDK installed and all of my environment variables configured so that's um, exciting to do but not so exciting to show so I'm just going to show you what this installer looks like so this installer is an executable that will be available on nativescript.org and also on your, um, if you're a platform subscriber, it'll be available in your downloads link. So once you download it and, and have it available locally, you just double click on it and um, you're walked through a series of steps. The first one is to check your requirements. So I had a couple of issues that needed to be fixed up, uh, but once I got past those and clicked install, I see the next screen coming up. So here you see some prerequisites being installed. Um, here I have the Android SDK being installed for me. And here you see we have some updates coming through to that SDK. And now it's installing the latest NativeScript version. Very exciting to see. And hooray, the installation was successful. So now I can go ahead and open the documentation and learn a little bit more about NativeScript. And at this point, I am ready to roll. So I went ahead, opened up a command prompt, and just did a TNS create my first Windows app. And here you can see the successful completion of this new app. And I am ready to start development. So those are the two awesome things I wanted to show you today, the new plugins hub and the new Windows installer. Uh, look for those linked up soon on nativescript.org. And now I'm going to pass the mic right back over to Rob. Thanks very much for listening, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. Now, I get to cover a fun topic that is really near and dear to my heart, and that is improving and extending the UI of your app. And the first topic here I want to cover are the new core themes that have actually been shipping with NativeScript since version 2.4. Now, these themes are available by default, and as you probably know by now, NativeScript apps are themed with CSS. And yes, this is the same CSS you've been using for years on the web. The themes themselves are actually written in SAS, and if you're not familiar with SAS, it's really just an extension of CSS, makes it easier to write and more maintainable over time. Now, the cool part of these themes is they come with a variety of color schemes. So by default, we have a light and a dark scheme. And if we scroll down here, you can pop open an image here that'll show us all the different color schemes that ship as part of our core themes. So some really nice color schemes that our designers have put together for us. Now let's take a look more closely at how these are used and what the results look like. And we're going to do that by using a kitchen sink demo app that's actually available as part of our public repository on GitHub here. So let me pop over to my terminal here and I'm going to say TNS run iOS and concurrently TNS run Android. And these will build and load the apps in my iOS simulator and Android emulator I have running. And while those are starting up, I'm going to head into my Visual Studio Code project here. So you can see an example of how these are used. Now, one thing you need to know is that the core themes rely on class selectors. So just importing the CSS into your app won't magically apply the styles. You do need to actually go into each individual element and specify the specific class you want to use. So as a simple example here, you can see we have a button element, and that has the BTN class applied to it. And that's all you need to do. Now the same syntax is going to apply to other elements. Oh, for example, let's take a look at our segmented bar. So our segmented bar here has a class of segmented-bar. Now remember, the core themes are based on class selectors, not element selectors. So you do need to apply these classes to all of your elements to get them to work. Now let's take a look at our simulators to see what's going on here. Let me bring that up. There's our iOS simulator and our Android one. 
don't know what MTP host is. We can get rid of that warning. All right, so here is our basic core theme. Let's take a look at our buttons on both the iOS simulator and the Android emulator. So you see a nice, friendly-looking theme applied here. And we can go through all of the UI elements. And again, these are all fully native. There's no magic going on here. Let's look at our switches. So fully native switches that are styled using the color themes that we've applied. Now, a cool thing about NativeScript is that, again, since everything's CSS-based, it's actually very easy to switch between themes dynamically. So at the very bottom of our side drawer, we can actually pop open new themes. So let's apply a dark theme here. And so we can see what the dark theme looks like for those same elements. Very nice looking, very, very, very easy to implement inside of your app. Now, just so you know, to add these themes to your app, we can actually look at the docs here. It's a very simple CSS import statement to get these new themes. So they're all available in our docs here. So you do simple add import, native script theme core, core light, and so on for all the different colors. Now, what if we want to build on and extend these apps? Now, while we can simply go into the CSS themes themselves and make some changes, it it's, might be easier to do it a, a different way. And that's why we came up with the native script theme builder. This is a new site available at nativescriptthemebuilder.com that lets you try out different color schemes based on your selections for all the different UI elements. And what we've provided here are a variety of color palettes you can load up. So let's just take a look at, how about this reddish one here? And you'll see everything gets loaded in all of our simulators. So we can see how those form elements, or rather those uh, UI elements will change. And now we can go into each individual element and change them by using our color pickers. So for example, if I want to change our button background color, make it a nice little orange there, we can do that and it's reflected right here. I guess that was kind of a bad choice, huh? <laughs> but like I said, you can go through and make changes to any UI widget you want, and those changes will be reflected in the simulator so you can see how they look on a device. Now you can also switch between iOS and an Android view because there are little tiny little differences between iOS and Android, of course, just to make sure it looks great on both platforms. Now, when you're satisfied with what you've done, you can simply click here to download the theme and we provide some basic instructions for you to download and use that theme in your app. And I'm going to go ahead and download it here. All right, now with that file downloaded, I'm going to pop open Visual Studio Code here. I'm simply going to copy this custom CSS file, and I'm going to drop it into my, my theme app here. And I'll put it in the demo styles directory. So there's my custom CSS file, and it should show up here. There it is. And I'm going to go into the app, oops, I'm going to go into the app.css file. And I already have this in here. I'm going to uncomment this line. And what this is saying is that by default, we're using the core light theme. And I'm going to import the new custom CSS file to override some of the colors that are in the core light theme. So I'll hit save here and head back to our simulators so we can see. There we go. So using Live Sync, we can see the changes were made immediately in our app and all the colors are there as we anticipated. And the cool thing for me is always to see these changes made directly in iOS and Android, right? One set of code, both platforms, works great, looks great. Now, the third leg of this UX Trinity, if you will, is a traditional strength from our history as Telerik. Now, if you're a .NET or JavaScript developer, you probably know of Telerik as a source for engaging widgets and controls. So we're really extending the strength into NativeScript with our UI for NativeScript offering. Now, UI for NativeScript is maturing, and it already has a set of seven widgets to help extend your app. Now, the chart component here allows us to create dynamic, data-driven charts and graphs using the native capabilities of iOS and Android. The list view component, this really builds on the native list view options, allowing you to easily manage and style large lists of data. 
Side drawer gives the ability to create drawers for either navigation purposes or for creating a nice little settings UI. The calendar component is a great abstraction over the existing native calendaring UIs for both iOS and Android, of course. And the data form here. Data form allows you to automatically create or automatically scaffold forms on top of existing data structures. Now this one I especially like. Um, but not pictured here are our feedback component. And this lets you gather in-app feedback from your app using Telerik backend services. We also have a new component called the Autocomplete Text View. And this provides auto-completion and multiple item selection via text interface. Now last week on the NativeScript blogs, we actually did a full week of UI for NativeScript blog posts with a deep dive into each of our components. So I highly suggest you check that out at nativescript.org. But right now I'd like to quickly show off our list view component. All right, so let's head back over to Visual Studio Code here. And I'm gonna open my list view demo application here. And while we're looking at the code here, I'm gonna just get these apps running. TNS run Android. All right, so while those are while those are getting loaded up, let's take a quick look at the code here. And let's turn on word wrap so you can see everything. So very straightforward, the red list view as it's known in code allows us to populate a list view with the items, which you can see here represented by the items property. We're applying a class to it just for some fancy little styling. And in this example, we're adding pull to refresh. So adding pull to refresh is a matter of setting this pull to refresh property, as well as specifying a JavaScript function to be executed when that pull to refresh initiated event is triggered. We're using a grid layout to put an image next to a stack layout of a couple different labels. So all very familiar basic native script concepts. Now in our code behind here, you can see our page loaded function, which is executed when the page is loaded, obviously. We're pushing a variety of items to an array, and we're setting that items property right here. Now, remember that pull to refresh initiated function I mentioned? That's what gets executed right here. So when I do a pull to refresh, now we're faking this out with some test data here, obviously, but we're saying after two seconds, add another item to that array. So simple enough, right? Let's take a look at our simulators here. There we see it in our Android emulator as well. So here's our list view. We have an image here, and we have two label elements that are stacked on top of each other. And if I do a pull to refresh, and there is my item at the bottom. Pull to refresh right here. So fully native, works perfectly, cross-platform, same code. That's all I have time for, so I would like to thank you all very much for watching. Of course, keep tabs on us at nativescript.org. We have a variety of ways for you to reach out and get help, whether it's through our docs or blog. There's a new forum at forum.nativescript.org. Of course, we always have big plans for upcoming releases, so definitely stay tuned. And thanks again, and have a great rest of your day.